Clouds Behind the Luminaries. Amazing, isn't it? Let's check this out and explore why this happens. I'm sure many of you have seen pictures or actually witnessed clouds behind the sun and moon. So what does science have to say about this? According to modern science, clouds behind the sun and moon are an illusion created by brightness from the light source. The source light is much brighter than the sky and the clouds around it. The intensity of light will cause a glare that will shine through the clouds in front, making them appear as if they were behind the source light. Since the sun is 93 million miles from Earth and the moon is 239,000 miles from Earth, the phenomenon is clearly an illusion. All right, this is what science has to say. All right, let's test it. Here we have a video of the sun and the clouds in front and clearly behind. And if you notice, the edges of the sun are very sharp and defined. Okay, keep that in mind. Here we have another video going closer here and you can see the same trait. The sun is engulfed in the clouds and there's a distinct edge around the luminary. And if you notice, the clouds in front of the sun are just as thick as the clouds behind it. This is a uh, video I shot uh, at Beulah Beach. And if you notice, the edges of the clouds are washed out because of the brightness of the sun. So they're right on that account. That actually does happen. Okay, see, look at here. See, as the clouds are passing past the sun, these edges aren't as defined as these edges here. They're washed out. Okay, so let's explore this further. All right, here I created an experiment um, uh, to explore the whole phenomena. So I have a light source, a studio light, and I shot this in my studio. And I have a bundle of uh, pillow stuffing on a light stand and a bundle of pillow stuffing on another light stand. And I have my camera set so that I can shoot them at the proper perspective. So I'm trying to mimic what's in the sky. So clearly these are my clouds and I tried to uh, make the uh, density of, of my, my little cotton clouds um, varied. All right, so this is from my camera's point of view and you can see that I actually have uh, uh, my light source here and you can clearly see that the clouds are in front of my light source. Now I'm going to increase the intensity of my light source and you will see what happens. So you can see the flare is making the edges of the clouds less distinct and is completely washing them out. Yet look here my clouds still appear in front of the light source. In spite of the extremely bright brightness of my light source, you can see here that the clouds, my, my little cotton clouds are still in front of the light source. All right, let's try another one. All right, see here you have the uh, clouds my cotton clouds are in front of the light source, but I took one bundle 
and, and brought them forward toward the camera. So the clouds aren't at the same level. They aren't at the same position. And I'm going to increase my light source. And as you can see, the clouds are getting brighter, of course, with more illumination. The edges are less distinct. The uh, clouds have washed out the edges, so you lost detail there. Okay. And then the cloud that is furthest, that is further away from the light source, the edges are still pretty distinct. But in spite of this very bright light source, this could be the sun or the moon, the clouds are, they still have not changed per, uh, position uh, as far as your perception is concerned. They are still, they still appear in front of the light source in spite of the brightness of the source. All right, let's look at something here. We have uh, a flight here of Luf Lufthansa, I'm sure I butchered that, L Lufthansa, <laughs> LH-480, Munich to Denver, and it is flying at 36,000 feet. So 36,000 feet, 28,000 to 36,000 is an average um, height for, uh, for uh, a commercial airline or a non-commercial airline, like an amateur plane, um, a private plane, that sort of thing. Okay, this is the altimeter of a Cessna, uh, two passenger plane, a private plane. And if you notice, we have 28,000 feet. Keep that in mind. Now, some of you may have seen this video before. It is way cool. And it really shows this phenomenon. Um, you probably haven't seen it uh, at this length. I decided to show the whole video. So you got the pilots here. And they're witnessing something that's pretty bizarre. Look at the light underneath the clouds, okay? Look at this bright light over here. And the uh, pilot and the passenger are pretty jazzed because what we have here, I'm gonna switch the camera view. What we have here is, look at all that light under the clouds, okay? That's very interesting. So that is due to, look at that. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the sun under the clouds, all right? It is not by the horizon. This is the horizon. This is the sun underneath this huge bank of thick clouds. Fascinating, all right? Um, the sun should be up there somewhere or back there somewhere, but it's clearly underneath the clouds and illuminating the clouds. Those aren't street lights. These guys are 28,000 feet high. Okay, so due to those experiments, what, what do we have here? Okay, my conclusion is the sun and moon are very close to the clouds. They would have to be. In order for the clouds to engulf the sun and moon, they would have to be close. They would have to be very local. The sun and moon are much smaller than the Earth. Okay? So they're not only close, but they're much smaller than the Earth. And according to science, uh, they shouldn't be. They couldn't be. But... Um, in order to be engulfed by the clouds, they would have to be much smaller than the Earth. Perception of cloud position is not affected by light intensity. So, if you'll notice in my experiment, the position of the cloud was not affected by the light intensity. The sun is not a giant hydrogen furnace. Okay, so that's kind of obvious. Um, the sun, if it were a giant hydrogen bomb consistently exploding up there in the sky, we wouldn't be alive. Um, so that conclusion is obvious with my experiment. And lastly, and this is a biggie, the solar system does not exist. Okay, 
let's 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 take all those conclusions all right let's put them all together so if the sun and the moon can be engulfed by clouds all right then that means they're within our atmosphere for lack of a better word they're within the air above us so that means they can be out in space the sun cannot be out in space for planets to to orbit the sun all right so if the sun is not out in space to provide the gravity well to uh to create those orbits of, of all those rocky planets um then there is no solar system it does not exist all right so the clouds behind the sun and moon change everything it's a game changer so those are my conclusions and remember don't accept verify